Hey guys, Mr. Barnes here again, bringing you another math video. This one uh, is another absolute value limit, and I had a couple requests to do this video. This is a question from a, a calculus workbook that I'm working on right now, and a couple of my students wanted me to do a video like this, so I thought I would. Uh, one where you have two absolute value limits in a particular limit. So I'm just going to do the one example, and let's let you guys know how to do it. So we've do, we've been looking at in the previous videos, sort of how you decide what to do with these absolute value limits. Basically, you have, two, you have a choice with an absolute value. You can choose to be at the plus of the absolute value or the minus, because we know that you know the piecewise definition of absolute value, you have x for x is greater than or equal to zero, or negative x for x is less than or equal to zero. So they're all basically, you know, some form of this, Except you know the you know the the linear function that's inside the absolute value might be a little bit more complicated. So when I'm stuck or if I can't decide, what I want to do is I want to sort of uh, you know look at what's happening. So first of all, before we do that though, we have to look at the fact that this is the limit as x goes to two. So really to solve this limit, we have to look at two from the left side and two from the right side. So let's take a look at each one of these graphs. So I'm just going to do a quick little sketch of them. So I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to rearrange this to x, negative x plus two. So it's exactly the same thing. So this is a linear function. And I'm going to put the absolute value. So this has an x-intercept of two right here. So there's the x-intercept. So it looks like this, just like that. So that's what that guy looks like. And if you notice, and what I usually tell my students to think about is, what piece of this is the actual linear function? So this guy right here consists of two pieces. This piece right here is the actual linear function because it has a negative slope. So if it has a negative slope, this, this left side is going to be my actual linear function. And then this guy right here is going to be sort of the negative of my linear function. So what I actually have here is something with a positive slope, because a negative and a negative make a positive, and then it has a y-intercept of negative 2, which would be down here. So this is my right side limit, and this is my left side limit. So this is what I would use for each particular piece. So when I say when I'm doing left of negative 2, so that's what that little guy means right there. Left of two, sorry. That means to the left of. Then for this first part, I would choose the just the simply the two minus x. So I'll write it as two minus x, which is the same as this guy. So now if we look at the graph of the absolute value of four x plus four x minus eight, so this has the same x-intercept, so it's at two here, so it kind of looks the same. So it looks like this. And if I look at my linear function, it's just 4x plus 8. So this is going to be this guy because it has the positive slope. So this is the 4x plus 8, and this is the minus 4x minus 8. Sorry, not plus 8. Minus 8. So it's getting kind of getting kind of tight there. Whoa, not in the camera. Don't comment. I'm sorry. Um, so there it is, right? So um, you need to make sure that we choose the right particular piece. So this is... Again, this is the left side, and this is the right side. So we have to make a decision about which one we're going to actually choose. So I'll choose, in this case, I'll choose the left side, because so it's the left side of 2. So negative, then bracket 4x minus 8. So what I tell my students is, essentially, just look at your slopes. So if you have a negative slope, like this particular one right here, and you're approaching from the left side, you take the positive of it. So let me say that again, a negative slope approaching from the left side, so essentially you have a negative and a negative, you take the positive of it. Where if you have a positive slope and a negative uh, from the left side, so the negative, so positive slope from the left side, you take the negative of it. So same signs for this particular one, you take the plus, different signs, take the negative. All right, so now what we need to do is actually just solve this limit. So um, 
we need to do a little bit of math here. So I'm going to just factor out a negative outside of this guy. So I'm left with x minus 2. And then in the brackets here, I'm going to factor out a 4. So I'm left with negative 4. So a positive 4 comes out with this negative because of the bracket there. x minus 2. And then cancel, cancel. So on top, I'm left with negative 1 over negative 4. Negative 1 over negative 4, which is 1 over 4. So that is my left side limit right there, okay? So now you have to go ahead and try the right side limit. So I'll just uh, get a new piece of paper for that. So I'll do uh, the limit as x goes to 2 from the right side. The absolute value of 2 minus x all over 4x minus 8. So I'll, I'll come back to my graphs just for one second just to show you. So now we're on the right side. So we're over here. All right. So for this guy right here, I'm going to choose this guy. So the negative of 2x minus 2 minus x. So it's going to be negative 2 minus x. And then I'm on the right side, so I can simply just take 4x minus 8. So let's see how this works out now. So the limit as x goes to 2 from the right side, so I take the negative 2x 8 and then I get 4x minus 8. So see how this works again, so I have a negative slope I have a negative slope and I'm approaching from the plus side, so I take the opposite sign, so if you're opposite you take the negative positive slope, plus sign, so take the plus, same signs, take the plus. So that kind of is a little bit of a pattern there, I don't know if you can run with that, but uh, a lot of my students use that to sort of figure their way through this without having to, because it's kind of a pain in the butt if you have to draw those graphs every single time. So now we can kind of solve this guy the same thing. So I take a, take a negative out of this guy, so I get, so if I take a negative out, I get negative and a negative, so it becomes plus. So essentially I just left with x minus 2. Or I can, you know, think of distributing the negative through as well. Take the 4 out, so if I take a 4 out, I get left with x minus 2. Cancel out those guys, and then I'm left with 1 over 4. So, nicely done. This this actually works out. So now because I have, you know, both one-sided limits are 1 over 4, so this guy is 1 over 4 right here, and then this guy is 1 over 4, we can actually say that the limit as x goes to 2 of 2 minus x all over absolute value of 4 minus 8, 4x minus 8, is equal to 1 over, 1 over 4. So for absolute value limits, if you're, if you're finding it to a particular just in number, there's no side to it, then you have to check both sides. You have to check the right side limit and the left side limit. All right, guys, I hope this, this helps you in your uh, quest to figure out this absolute value stuff. Thanks for watching, and I, I promise this is my last absolute value video. All right, thank you a lot, guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys in class.